so thank you very much, Joe. Um, I'll place Joe firmly in the seat of the person responsible for getting me here after a conversation we had early in the year. But give all the credit to David Freeman, my ac our account exec. So, so thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, as, say, as Joe said, my name is David Stockdale. I'm the uh, deputy director um, responsible for infrastructure, for data services, and for operational security. And I'm also the director of OzCert, which is a cybersecurity company out of the University of Queensland. So the University of Queensland. OK, so I mean, a lot of people in this room probably are from uh, higher education. Uh, but you know, we, University of Queensland is about 108 years old now. And uh, over that time, we've, we've graduated well over a quarter of a million uh, people, which is quite an achievement. We, uh, we consist of about 6,600 staff, um, with a mixture of obviously the 2,800 academic and 3,800 uh, professional staff. We've taken about 53,500 53, students uh, from about 135 countries. And like all Australian universities, we, we, do, we take a lot of students from, from abroad for obvious reasons. There's actually not that many people in Australia, really. So, so we, we, it's obviously a, 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 the international market is very important. Um, and to give you just the context of, of the size, really, is, is probably the $2 billion worth of, of turnover, of income that we generate, of about 620 years, 620 years of research. And we are, University of Queen's is one of the, uh, the research-intensive universities. So that really sets the context, because universities are big business. And to put that into context a little bit more, now, university is a big business. Uh, a number of years ago, we'd have probably been talking, you know, when people thought about universities, they didn't think about us as businesses, but we are. And the education market is the third biggest export in Australia. Again, that, I think, puts it into context. So we only be, we're behind INO and we're behind coal. But education services, that includes the travel and everything lumped, lumped together, is the third biggest export. There are about 40 universities, public, public universities in Australia. Uh, there's a few private ones. And the University of Queen, and, and five of those, five of those universities are in the top 50 of the world. Now there's a lot of universities in the world. So to be, have five in the, top, in the top 50 is very impressive. And I think uh, people who work in higher education should acknowledge us as big business and also the importance that we play in, 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 in the world in that sense. And the University of Queensland ranked 47th. So if there's anybody from Melbourne in here and the, and the Sydney universities, they're probably thinking, ah, oh, yes, but we're higher. So yeah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> the, weather's, the weather's definitely not as good down there. And it's certainly not very good in a, a, for Canberra and the people from A&U, so hey. So just a little bit about, uh, a tiny, tiny bit of it was setting the scene really about, um, about University of Queensland, higher education, uh, etc. Um, you know, we, at the moment we've made, a, we've made a, a massive commitment and we've got a $40 million year, $40 million year on year capital investment program. And that was, that was last year, that was this year, that's next year. It's actually growing slightly, it's probably it averages out to 40 million. Um, we've got a three year roadmap to at least review and probably replace all our enterprise stacks. Um, so again, talking to uh, our friends from, from Deloitte, actually, we're talking about the complexities of, of taking big systems and picking them apart and replacing them. Again, we, we, we're working on big systems in universities. Um, again, there's some, there's some, there's some uh, little facts there that probably uh, you know, reflect what other universities do. Uh, and the other thing that's quite, that's quite important to us is because we're research-centric, it's really about, we, we're putting 100 gig networking throughout the university. We're connecting everything at 100 gig, and we've got 200 gig of internet connectivity. And that is a, that, that's, it's a massive challenge, and it, it's, it's quite unique. American universities, you'll see that, um, and the other Australian universities are definitely moving towards that. But again, the nature of our business, especially research universities, is that we need to have this type of connectivity. And that's unique, that you won't find this in the private sector as well. So why a UQ data lake? Well, again, uh, quite a few universities have been doing this. We started off with this vision of data analytics will facilitate the transformation of data assets 
et cetera, et cetera. And to, but the important bit is to support university de decision making and business performance analysis. So it's quite a grand statement. Um, I didn't create it. Um, one of our governance people created it. So, but we tried to interpret that. And what we, what, what in, in our hearts, what was actually really important was to make UQ a data-centric organization. So that might seem an obvious thing to do, but I can guarantee that virtually no organization is truly data-centric. Might have good business intelligence units, we do at the University of Queensland, um, but we're not fully data-centric. And, and really, data is the, is the core to what, to what we, we make our decisions on. And then the other, the other sort of, in our hearts, the other sort of vision that we had was, to, was actually to make the University of Queensland into one big living laboratory. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, it means that we really, we, we're, you know, we've, we're a campus, we've got three main campuses, and we've got 53,000, whatever that number was, 53,000 students, 50, whatever, and all those people on campus. We're a small town, or a, a large town, a small city, whatever you want to, however you'd like to say it. We can actually do a lot of research on what we're actually doing ourselves, of how our campus operates. So that was the other real goal, is how do we move to, A, a data-centric organization, but how do, we, how do we make University of Queensland a living laboratory so researchers can actually do research on, on ourselves, at least prove some of their theories? So those were our sort of our vision statements, really. So what did we do? How did we start? How did we start this? Well, again, uh, apologies for the governance people. I'm not a governance person, but we started with a strategy. But I think it's really important because we, we essentially took the approach of thinking of it from the business, and that's really important. And I do have to come sometimes check myself because as an ex, I'll call myself an ex-technologist because I'm not supposed to really play with things or anything. But um, as, a, as a technologist at heart, then it's easy to start with the technology. Whereas what we try to do is start from the business. So we articulated this strategy. So based on that vision of data analytics will facilitate the transformation of data assets into meaningful and useful information to support business uh, decision making. Then we essentially, what we did was we, we did the, other, the next, these goals. We, we wanted to De uh, um, democratize the, and govern data analytics, build the right data management uh, and platforms, and then develop the talent as well. Because again, we're, we're living in an age where you know, people are really realizing how important data is. And getting data scientists, getting data engineers is actually quite difficult. So we needed to build, to build that as well. So once we'd actually built this strategy, and it was, it was actually quite short, it was quite, um, it was quite a short document, it was probably about three or four pages. We then took it to the senior leadership of the university and got their approval. So, so once, we had, once we had that, we had these, these principles that you can see on the left-hand side. That was sort of the, all the governancey type stuff really completed. We, you know, data should be discoverable for a start and should be available for analysis. It's, a, it's quite an obvious statement, but we, you need to make it, make it clear. Analytics activities must be guided by ethical use of data and insights. And who, who's watched Netflix, uh, the, um, the Cambridge Analytica one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? At, at the very least, it's interesting. At the worst, it's probably quite frightening. But we, we've got a great responsibility about data, so we can do some wonderful things. And I know talking to colleagues in other universities where they've used data and, and maybe um, they've, they've um, had some uh, pushback from it. But, you know, you take data on uh, not necessarily about people themselves or where it's identifiable, but you take that and start making decisions. You need a good process around how you're going to communicate that to, you, to, to the people themselves. So you've got to be, you've, you've really got to be uh, ethical about that. And also really make it quite plain, quite, quite apparent how you're using it. But also make it apparent what the benefits are to the actual, to the people who have got that, who you're using the data on. And then we needed to access controls that are designed to respect the confidentiality. That sort of feeds in from the other one. And then, you know, realizing that data is utilized as a strategic asset. Again, 
one of those things that, that everybody's talking about is data is the new oil. And I think in my sort of, uh, in, in my, the little spiel that I gave beforehand on, um, which is published, um, is data is the new oil. Yeah, well, okay, that's great. And it definitely has real, real value. We realize that now. But we need to know how to use it where, and where to find it as well. And that's, so, so that, that's a, in, in a very important as, um, aspect. So once we had these principles in place, Let's get onto the actual data lake itself. Secure by design. Again, it's a given. But if you're an if you're an infrastructure people, if you sorry, if you're an infrastructure person, you've probably been thinking all your life about making things available, not actually making it secure. We also set the don't think technology first. So that's why we started with the strategy. Don't come and look at oh, you know, this is Vendor A has got this great platform, let's get it in. Oh, what are we going to use it for? Don't do that. Don't buy to grow into. So essentially we were saying we're not going to buy a massive amount of storage and some big platform from some, from some uh, vendor of tin. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, build something that we can grow into. And therefore cloud is the obvious, is really the obvious choice because you're paying for what you're using. You're not paying for what you may use in two or three or four years' time. Because Amazon Web Services are our, one of our two strategic partners at the University of Queensland, we actually said we are going to build it first and foremost in AWS, and we're going to use AWS platform technologies only. And where we find that they maybe uh, if, if we need to move away from that a little bit, then we'll move away at the right time. But let's start with the, with the platform technologies. And I would say that 90% of it is still in using native platform technologies. And then this final one, uh, the final one of take the algorithm to the data, not the data to the algorithm. Let me be totally honest. That phrase actually only came about about a week ago. But in, again, in our hearts, in our vision, in our, in our thoughts, we knew this is what we wanted to do. Now, what does that mean? We've built, we're building a data lake. We're going to have lots of data in there. We're going to have raw data. We're going to have curated data sets. Uh, why then extract all the data to do the analysis at somewhere else? That's not, the, it's not, it's just not very efficient for one thing. So really, again, something like Amazon allow you to build your, your, an, your analysis and your visualization pieces within the actual platform. So take the algorithms to the data not vice versa. So, we've got the strategy bit right, I hope. Uh, we certainly had buy-in. We had, very, it had a lot of interest in what we were going to be doing. So the next steps for us was to, well, think about, well, what sort of use cases can we, can we try out? So build some use cases. Again, that's coming back to thinking it from the business aspect, not from the, not from the technology. Then build a proof of concept, make sure that our thoughts, what we're thinking would work around the cloud technologies, the AWS platform technologies. Then go back and get executive buy-in, because at this, that's, by that stage, hopefully, we would be in a position to say, look, We've, promised, we've made this sort of these, these vision statements, we've got this strategy, this is how we're going to deliver it and get that buy-in again. And then finally, we'd actually put some governance on top of it. Now that might seem a little bit illogical to put the governance on at the end, but remembering we're actually putting security in, we're baking in security from the, ver from the very start. The governance layer we'll touch on towards the, towards the end. So our use cases. These are the these are some of the use cases we came up. Uh, we, we actually brought we, we came up with, and I'm sure if there's people in from some I know some of the other universities are dealing with some of these things themselves as well, and we we're using different methodologies to do it. But research research performance engagement. Okay, that really speaks to our living laboratory idea. How can we give? How can we give? researchers, f um, uh, postgraduates, um, honours students, how can we give them access to data from the university? And some of that would be maybe corporate data, or what we'd consider traditionally as corporate data. 
How could we give them stuff to enhance their research? And one of the examples where we're actually doing that is, in, is with fourth year undergraduates who uh, we're giving them anonymized data and they're actually looking at how the campus, how, how people interact with the campus itself. And then that's actually feeding back into the professional services to inform some of the decisions about it. But it's, it's really, it's, it, it's, it is, um, it's enabling those students to do something that's real, using real data in this real environment. One of the things, obviously, students at risk, we talk about you know, University of Queensland and the other universities, you'll all be the, uh, the, the people, from the colleagues from other universities. We're all very aware of the, of the income streams and it's extremely important to, to look at students. But the most important thing about, this, about the students is actually making sure the outcome is good for the student. They've actually invested in your institution and they want an outcome. Now, I know there's all the, uh, the sort of affiliated things, there's all the, the fun part of going to a university, but at the end of the day, they've probably come to you to get a degree for their, to, to advance their careers. And so the more that we can do in terms of, uh, of looking after them, ensuring that they are, if, if, they, if they are starting to fail, that we can, that we can in, get in there quickly, and um, that we can get in there quickly and, and turn that around, it's very important. We also, uh, and a lot of uh, so the only older universities will be looking at um, at how do we change our teaching practices. So moving away from the sage on the stage idea, and moving to more collaborative teaching, uh, needs we need to understand well how, how is our facilities used. Uh, we'll miss curriculum improvement, uh, but we'll talk about space optimization. Universities are, are particularly bad at utilization of space. We are naturally, we, we, uh, University of Queensland works on a two semester scheme. About half the year we don't do anything in those spaces. That, that's, let's be honest, most of that space is actually not used. Even in a research intensive university, now how can we actually make it better? But when we are using it, how can we make it, how can we actually get the maximum efficiency out of it there? We'll probably leave income do um, potential donors. Um, and energy intelligence uh, we're gonna come back to. Uh, and then also, once you've got hold of your data, you can start to look at some sa security, safety, compliance, and fraud type stuff. So again, I won't really touch too much on that one. So we built these use cases. And then we chose, we chose a couple of them to actually build our proof of concept data lake around. Um, and what we, have, what, we, what we decided is that the process is, well, once we had which use cases we were going to focus on, we'd look at what data sources were required. So we weren't looking to put everything into our data lake, not, not, not on day one. How do we actually get that data in? How do we store it? How do we enrich it? How do we catalog it? Probably one of the most important parts. And then how do we do the analytics and present that so that people can make decisions on it? And using those seven categories, we actually built this. Now this is actually a simplified diagram. So for, apologies for those people who are actually working in, in actually building in Amazon. This is not the most exciting diagram. Uh, but let me talk about some of the technologies that we actually used in there. So we've got our, we've obviously got our, uh, we've, got, we've got our sources, our data sources out here. Things like uh, our learning, uh, learning environment stuff. Uh, we might have other databases from things like our student data. Uh, we might, oh, oh sorry, a student data out here. Uh, we've got things like our wireless data, which uh, obviously gives you a good indication of who's, who's using the, the, uh, the environment, or who's, who's a, in, the, in the environment. And then we use a number of technologies, uh, platform, AWS platform technologies. So we've using Kinesis quite a bit uh, to stream that data in. And then we used uh, AWS Glue. So Glue had just actually become available to us when we were starting to build our proof of concept. Um, and really, the, the whole point of Glue is to generate, is to do initial cataloging of our data, and then and generate the new tables in into our S3 into into the S3 data stores. Again, simplistically, we just show S3 here, but the reality is we we have a number of S3 areas. S3, uh, um, we provisioned a lot of S3, and we've got some some of it's a landing area, um, and some of it's. Uh, curated data sets afterwards. So, so th this is actually would expand out in a proper architectural diagram to be much bigger. We're using Parquet for those people who are technical, the uh, Parquet format in our curated data sets because it allows us to, to find data very, a lot easier, a lot quicker. And then what we actually do is when we land data, when we do land data in here, 
uh, through some of this process, through the, through the glue process or through the kinesis or any other mechanism we have to ingest. We're actually using lambda to run and, and to run, sorry, we run lambda functions to then move the data into the curated data sets. Um, just one of the things I mentioned earlier was the idea that we'd use platform, we'd use AWS platform all of the time, unless it, was a, it got to a point where we couldn't. This is actually an example of where our proof of concept we used, we used Spark uh, for the Elastic Map Reduce um, for, uh, part of it. But what actually we've done now is we've, we've, we're still using Spark, but we're not using the platform. We've actually built it in, in, in EC2 ourselves and we, because we wanted higher performance. So now we've got to the stage where, on our pilot, where we've moved to a production, really, that we've, we've built this component ourselves. Um, and then we obviously we do our cataloging, and really having all that data together means we can start to think that use things uh, stuff like TensorFlow to do some machine learning around that. And some of the things that we, some of our um, stream sources that we've got now are things like images, camera images, where we're not looking for people, we're just looking for head count. Um, and th therefore we would use Kinesis in, we would uh, Lambda to function, and then we're using. A, we're using some machine learning algorithms to, to work, to actually do the head counting. So that is essentially what, what we built, uh, proof of concept. The, as I say, the, the pilot doesn't look an awful lot different. Uh, the actual pilot slash production doesn't look a lot different. It's just a little bit more complex. And we'd be happy to share that if you, um, if, if anybody was actually interested to get a, a better feel for the, for the architecture. So coming back to the user use cases, so learning, learning analytics is what we called it. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, about student dashboards in higher education. Um, we haven't actually gone for a student dashboard as, as such. We've gone for a, te for a teacher dashboard, should we call it. And this allows the, the lecturers, uh, uh, essentially the, we'll call them teachers for the time being. Uh, this, this, was, this is to enable the teachers to do intervention, to do early, to do early intervention. So what it actually allows us, a, a, a particular tutor slash lecturer, a teacher to do, is choose the course they're teaching. And then they'll have a, an overview of all of the students and how they're performing. And this is just a quick snapshot. So this is one of the, this is one of the applications we've built on top of our data lake, the foundate, that we, and that, that's why it's so foundational. And this allows, uh, say, this allows them to get, it, an, uh, to get the teachers to get an understanding of how they, how they, they, they um, the students are performing and where they can, where they need to intervene. Uh, this is live now, but not on all courses yet. Uh, and then the other, the other, uh, one of the other use cases that we'll talk about is space utilization. Again, I've touched on space utilization quite a lot. But what we've actually built, what we've built here is a, is a, is a, I hate the word dashboard. It's more of a, it's more of a tool. And this allows us to, this is the uh, St. Lucia campus, if anybody knows University of Queensland. Uh, this is our main campus. It allows us to, uh, not to drill down to, uh, to a desk space or a room space, but what it does allow us to, dry, to drill down to is the floor utilization. And also tell, it tells us what the split of people are, people are in, in that. So how many staff, how many students. Uh, and it gives us uh, long term. It gives us trending as well, so we can see that. And we have the ability to we have the ability to interact with the data, um, to see how it changes. And it's it's quite over. You know, you see the evidence of the weekends, but then you if it, this is actually ad, this one is an administration building that we've picked out here, which is somewhere around here. Um, and so you wouldn't see much of a train a change in semester and, and out of semester. But here we've got a, one, of, one of our sandstone buildings. Um, and this one we can then see the breakdown on per floor that you can interact with. And you can see that, the, and this is actually, a, I think, um, this is a tutorial space that was, oh, this, was hey, this is the floor two, which is used a lot for teaching. Um, and you can see the trend down over, over the semester. But the other thing is we wanted to look at how our, teach, our real teaching space, not just how general space was being utilized, but we wanted to look specifically around how teaching space was utilized because of this idea of moving to maybe flat floor away from tiered lecture theaters. And so we've built another, another sort of tool where we can interact. And this, I'll show you the, the very quick model. In fact, um, in fact I can probably, we'll, I'll show you the, the quick data model first. 
Um, whoops, wrong button. Uh, go back. This this data model to to do this sort of the, this teaching space, this teaching space. We we had to bring in our enrollment data, our timetabling data for the space, the actual room data, and we use our Wi-Fi data. And, and that essentially is what brings us to to being able to deliver this type of dashboard. And here you can see a particular space. It's got an uh, it's got a financial reporting. Is the is the is the course that's been taught? It's a tutorial. It's two hours. And then we can see what the attendance is. Now, probably everybody's going to go, well, your Wi-Fi data is not going to give you 100% accuracy. Not everybody's connected to your Wi-Fi. Well, that's very true. But we were working from a baseline of 0% accuracy. So if I can get us to 80, to 70 or 80%, that's a massive improvement. So let's not get hung up on 100%. Let's get, on, let's get hung up on 70 and 80% because that makes a massive difference to the university. So how did we do it? Well, we used Amazon's AWS's professional services. And a call, uh, shout out to Paul Macy. I haven't seen Paul today, but Paul was uh, was the uh, was the, essentially the solutions architect who came. Fantastic. Did a very short engagement, and then we used Servian uh, to deliver sprints to build some of those tooling that tooling on top of it. And what did that actually give us? That combination. Well, it made us deliver the project well under budget. Now, when I'm talking about well under budget, we delivered the first part of that data lake for 25% of what we'd budgeted for. And that meant that we had 75% left that we, could, that we could start to build business capability on top of the university's foundational data lake. So coming back to those use cases, what have we actually done? I'm actually not reading them myself as I'm saying it. So what we actually left with, so we, we've, we've done the, sort of the, the space, the, the teaching space stuff, we've done the space utilization, uh, we've done the, uh, the, 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 student, the, the student success, and then we're left with energy intelligence. That's what we're going to do next, energy intelligence. Now, University of Queensland is quite unique because it's going to be the first university in the world to generate more energy than it uses. That's per se. That's solar energy. We tr we're building such a big solar farm. Now that's that's a massive accomplishment. But that does not mean we should be we should be throwing away the energy that are, are being being you know not being good at pr good practice for our energy. So we're building some uh, some good some good uh, tooling around how we use our energy. That's what's next. So our journey, strategy, use cases, proof of concept, got the executive buy-in and then finally layering that governance on. And I've got two minutes, and what I want to say about governance is we're doing it last. We're doing it last because now, actually, we, we've got everything that works. We've got good security in there, but now we're giving people the responsibility to own the data. We're giving people the, the custodianship, uh, and they'll actually, the, the, those people within the university, within, within the business, they'll be allowed to tell people how they can use the data, and then we can deliver it for them. And that is me. Done. Thank you very much.